Hey everybody, this is The Slightest Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about Moon Knight Season 1, Episode 6, the season finale, or maybe series finale, because we really just don't know. Um, Gods and Monsters. Okay, I got a problem with this series, and I got a problem with this episode. Now, here's the thing. Don't get me wrong. Now, it was a good episode. It finally gave us some action. Um, and the CGI was on point. But. This is a strange series. First of all, what kind of superhero TV show is named after the hero, but the hero barely shows up in the entire season? I'm not even kidding you. I, I don't even know even how much like I could if I had to count how much screen time Moon Knight actually had, I would give him a total of maybe three to five minutes in six episodes that are about how long are they about? Um like an hour or something long? And that in fact this episode was short. Those end credits were long. And so yeah, this dude don't even really show up in his own series, and he barely showed up in this episode. Mr. Knight showed up a whole lot more. Uh, well, not so much more, but he kept popping in and out. And Moon Knight was show just to disappear. Let, let me explain. So here's the thing. I am tired of this Disney Plus formula. We should all be used to it by now. Basically, however many episodes there is, Every episode is basically mystery building, giant filler, and then the last episode gives you nothing but action. And that's how this episode was. It was nothing but action and barely any story. Now, the action was good. It should have been better for that of Moon Knight. I felt like Moon Knight's fights were the weakest in this entire thing because you had Kanchu and you had Amit fighting each other and their CGI battle was cool. It was really cool. Now you did have Moon Knight flying around and fighting, but it was very brief and it, and he was fighting Hero, and it looked like CGI at times because I don't know what the world it is, but with that Moon Knight and Mr. Knight suit, Something looks CGI with it. It's practical slash CGI. When the cape moves, it looks like CGI. When the face moves, it looks like CGI. When the hood moves, it looks like CGI. And there's something weird going around the chest area. And like, I'm just like, is it a practical suit or is it not? Like I've seen the behind the scenes stuff. I know it's a practical suit, but why does it always look like CGI? They're doing that Spider-Man crap with the suit where it's a practical suit, but then they CGI the entire thing over it. Why in the world are they doing this crap? I don't get it. It doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel tangible. You feel like you can't reach into your screen and grab it and nothing to bite onto it. Like there's nothing there but CGI stuff. And it's visually like weird and unappealing and stuff like that, right? And so like, it's just, it's, it's just strange and bizarre. And then so, before I get into the rest of the fights and stuff like that, let me finish the thing I was saying before. I'm sick and tired of this Disney Plus formula. We should not, as fans, let them keep getting away with this. All right? We have got to stand up to Disney and Marvel. We have got to stand up to these Disney Plus series. Almost every episode is like that. Like That's what really bugged me about Hawkeye. Hawkeye was just like tons of like mystery filler and then in that last episode boom we had a lot of good action and then we had a little bit of action in the third but it was a lot of action in the last episode and it's just kind of like you know why are you giving me all this filler like just give me some good stuff you know what i'm saying and 
the problem I'm having with Moon Knight is we are now used to the MCU formula. Everything is connected, whether you want to believe it or not. Everything. Except for this series. This is the only standalone solo series. It feels weird seeing this now because we're not used to it. Or at least it's weird for me because I'm not used to it now. I'm used to it with DC, but I ain't used to it with Marvel. Everything has to connect. How in the world is Moon? Because Kevin Feige and the creator of this show even said that this is going to connect to the MCU movies. How? How are the Egyptian gods, who we still barely know, by the way, are going to connect to that of the MCU? How? Like, this doesn't, it, it, I just don't feel like it's going to connect. Is Moon Knight, what, going to join, like, a new group of uh, Avengers that's probably going to be assembled? Or no, because I forgot, they, I think they said they're done with the Avengers and the MCU. So what a world is Phase 4 exactly about? I don't really get it. Is it just a bunch of heroes band together, but not going to call themselves the Avengers? And so, because it doesn't connect, it's really bugging me. Also, what was the purpose of the actual series? It has an extremely weak villain it has an even uh, weaker uber villain they were pointless they were weak that is the mcu formula because the mcu formula who's ever gonna be the main 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 bad person in the movies that's gonna be the tough person it was thanos and now the new one is supposed to be kane the conqueror however i still haven't seen loki yet but i've seen clips of kane showing up if that's how he's gonna act for like the movies all silly and goofy, no thank you. I will not watch. I will not watch the movies. I will watch something else. I will not sit through Disney baby humor. Speaking of which, thank God this episode didn't have much baby humor in it. It only had a tiny bit. But when it did, I cringed. When Steven saw, uh, saw the hippo laying like, hippo! I'm just like... Let me come through that screen and Will Smith you in the face. <laughs> I could not take it. And it was it was brief and I could not take it. <laughs> I cringed. <laughs> I wanted to slap him. <laughs> I do not like Steven. I I don't like him. This show set us up to like Steven and I don't like him. I'm sick of his gooberish nature. I'm sick of him acting corny. I'm sick of him acting like a coward. I'm sick of him and his comedic baby humor. All right, when he died in episode five, I was happy. But then here comes Steve, no, here comes Mark saving him. And I'm like, oh, you little punk, you. <laughs> and everything. Like, you, like, let him die. <laughs> let him die. <laughs> And so I was pissed about that. But anyways, I know I'm jumping around. That's because I'm just irritated with this episode. Like, I'm irritated. It was a good episode. But there were little things in there that irritated the crap out of me. Because this, this, this whole series was lame. It was pointless. It was dull. It was boring. It took us on a trip. And for a couple of episodes, you didn't even know what trip it, you were going on for what reason. And because the main reason is... Arthur Hallow just wants to resurrect Ahmed. Uh, he was the former like champion of um, Kanchu. He got cast out. He got pissed. He walks on glass for his atonement and everything. And then he carries around that stick with the, the, the magical power things. And he's a lame villain. I, I've been seeing so many people jumping for joy in this episode. Talking about it's so great and this and that. And Moon Knight's the best thing since the Punisher series. In the world said that. <laughs> but I read that comment. And I'm just like, no. <laughs> and so, like, he wants to free Ahmed. And in order to do that, he has to get the statue, which he now has because he shot uh, Mark. And Mark is dead. Mark's in that, um, that, that, that paradise uh, field. Which, by the way, I saw somebody commenting talking about. Um, they ripped this off of um, Zack Snyder's Justice League because Superman was in that field of dreams type thing. And yeah, it does look similar. However, it also looks similar to when Thanos was in um, 
soul world, but not really. But the whole open field thing, yeah, that came from Zack Snyder <laughs> and stuff. Like it's a it's a literal copycat ripoff of that, and it's kind of like they couldn't come up with anything different than that. But anyways, I digress. So he has to um, go to like you know that that that, that pyramid thing and and resurrect his alligator person and so like um i think um layla she follows because she's gonna kill um hallow because she's pissed because he killed like um both steve and both um mark which now she likes mark like what the world because um yeah she kind of um hated him and wanted to kill him two episodes ago um but now she's back to liking him and so like she follows and she's about to kill him. but then the hippo lady whose name i still don't know by the way they only say her name by like once or twice and i just don't know it i'm not gonna read it and say it because they should tell me over and over Hippo lady talks to her from the dead to the dead people and she's all like, oh, you know, Mark doesn't want you to kill him and blah, blah, blah and stuff like that. And so we have to free Conchu. So she follows him to the tomb place, but she gets like found out. So she's running and she's running. Now here's the one thing that bugs me. All the Egyptian gods, they suck. Um, after like, you know, like, um, like seriously, I, their avatars got magical powers. They all got their butt whooped off screen. Once again, the action was off screen. They got the butts whooped by Hallow. He just has a, a stick with magic powers. How in the world did he beat all those avatars? He's not even that great of a villain. And he's that powerful with his little stick. But anyway, she runs, she finds Kanchu, and so she frees him. Um, she frees him after Ahmed is free. You know, Ahmed doesn't even really seem that bad of a villain. And I didn't even know she was a female. Um, this is how much about the Egyptian gods I know little about. Because the show doesn't really tell you nothing. But yes, I went online and finds out from... It's hard to find. You can't even find it on Wikipedia. After doing some soul searching online. Yes, yeah, she is female after all. And um, so she doesn't even seem that bad of a villain to tell you the truth. And so like... But of course, she wants the souls of all these people and everything. So he does his stick match powers, and a um, bunch of souls come up, and she's just eating them. So generic villain just wants to eat some souls. And so, like, this is the part that bugs me. Now, Layla knows she has no superpowers. She just has a gun. And... Conchu's all like, look, we gotta stop Ahmed, we gotta stop Halo and all these people. I want you to be my new champion. She's like, no. And he's like, why not? And she's all like, because Mark don't like you and Mark don't trust you and I don't trust you. And so, okay, the fate of the world is about the end. She needs to be the champion and fight the bad guys, but she don't want to do it. So she's like, fine, I'll help you, but you ain't gonna like possess me, nothing like that. How is she going to take them all on? The fate of the stinking world is at stake and she's having a hissy fit because her husband, who she hates, doesn't trust this dude. That is stupid writing. And I hate stupid writing. It's not even bad writing. It's stupid writing. Oh, yes, let me get into Steve slash Mark. So, in a way, they're in the land of filled of dreams. Mark goes to the sand and goes and tries to, like, you know, um, help um, do, 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 um, Steve. But he's still sand statue thing. So then Mark turns to a sand statue. They hold hands, they kumbaya, and they free. And then the sand is coming towards them. Hippo lady saves them. He says hippo, and they run into the light. Now they're like alive and everything. Ooh, now it all happened of all like one minute. Could have been bigger and grandiose, but no, because they had to show a bunch of end credit scenes and stuff. Um, so like, um. So at some point in time, the dying, the dying like avatar, she's all like, how do we like, you know, stop um, Ahmed? And they're like, you have to like rebind her and stuff like that and, and all this other crap. And she's like, how? And of course they die, but of course they need conchu and stuff. So anyways, 
At some point in time, Hippo Lady possesses that of Layla. And she's having that moment where, um, remember that moment where, like, Steve and Mark kept, like, you know, switching places and talking to each other? And, and like, no, 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 when Steve was, um, being possessed by, like, Mark, and he didn't know, and, like, you know, his arms were waving around and moving around, and, and he wasn't, like, giving that dude, like, the little scarab beetle and stuff like that. And so, like, she's having that moment. And it's baby humor Disney crap. And you know how I feel about baby humor Disney crap. So in the midst of all this is baby humor. And so she's having an out of body experience and the hippo lady's trying to take over and they're talking. And wouldn't you know it, Layla decides, hey, I'm going to let hippo lady take um, control of my body and be her avatar. Hippo lady who she doesn't even know. Now, here's the thing. She don't know Hippo Lady. She knows Conchu through Mark. So why wouldn't she let Mark take over her body? No, um, Conchu. No, she lets Hippo Lady and stuff. But she was so adamant about not being an avatar and being a champion. But she just up and lets the Hippo Lady take over. How does she know Hippo Lady's even good? Because it's stupid writing. But she takes over. She gets a nice little costume and wings. So, this is a problem I'm having right now. First things first, let me get to a comment I read online. Somebody said, now that Marvel gave Layla wings, I guess DC's going to start having more heart, um, hot girl and their stuff. Okay, first things first, who the heck writes that? You don't know your fandom. Okay, hot girl has been appearing on screen for a long stinking time. Before this series even came out, um, the first that I knew of was Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. I then she cameoed in Smallville, and then she appeared in Young Justice. But oh wait, she was in the first season of Legends of Tomorrow, wings and all. And then guess what? Person who don't know their history. She is going to appear in the, um, the Rocks, um, what is it, Black Adam. So, yeah, um, DC don't need Marvel's help to reintroduce fans into an Egyptian, like, warrior or wings. I, <laughs> and so my other problem with this is I would have been completely fine with Layla being a superhero and everything like that. If it was like the second season or third season, it would, and you know, the second season would have been fine. My problem is the first season's only six episodes. Moon Knight has barely showed up in his own series. We have barely got any action scenes with that of Moon Knight. And now we're getting a brand new superhero who, by the way, is a heck of a lot more impressive than that of Moon Knight. Her fighting skills are awesome, but Mark is supposed to be a mercenary, but his fighting skills suck. And so now Layla and her superhero avatar type thing is overshadowing that of Mark Moon Knight. And yes, she overshadows him. That is messed up. Could you imagine if Speedy or Arsenal would have showed up in the first season of Arrow and overshadowed him or Kid Flash in season one of The Flash. Like, you see what I'm saying? To give you a good prime example, Batwoman, it just got canceled. They were going to introduce Luke's Batwing earlier on in season two. But when Ruby Rose left and they had to reboot the se um, season uh, or series and bring in Ryan Wilder, they didn't want Luke's Batwing to overshadow that of Ryan. So they brought him in in the finale of that season. And they had a good 20, they had a good 18, 20 something episodes, right? However many episodes Batwoman has. So that was the proper way to do it. They would have brought Luke's Batwing in early, then people would have been like, well, screw Ryan, because we just want to see Batwing and everything. And so this is the problem I'm having with this. They should never have had Layla's character be like a hero. 
because when she does suit up, like I said before, she outshines that of Moon Knight. She has way better fight scenes than him. In fact, you want to know who else outshines Moon Knight? Mr. Knight, Stephen Grant. Steven, at some point in time, see, when Contru comes back, he sees Marcus back, he, res he resurrects him, bullets coming out, he puts the suit back on him, and blah, 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 and then, so there's someplace else, and then they have to get someplace else, and Mark's all like, well, how am I supposed to get there, and he's all like, you forget, I'm like the god of something, the stars, or something like that, and he's able to now give Mark the ability to fly, because Mark could not fly before, because, you know, in the comics, he has that jet, but they ain't gonna do that here because he's not a vigilante so they just make him fly and so he's flying but then steven being an idiot that he is wants to take over and then they fall but then they fly back up again because he lets mark take over so anyways at some point in time during the fight when mark does like he's like fighting as moon knight steve decides he wants to take over for some bizarre reason when he sees like layla or something and he has these billy clubs, like you know that he does. And he's actually whooping on the bad guys. When did Steve learn how to fight? Was it when he was in the underworld? Because I don't remember that in any other episode. But he's whooping on people. And then uh, Mark takes back over again. And then Mark's fight is very unimpressive. Again. Now, like I said before, Ahmed and Kanchu fight was cool, but it was just basically two giants pushing and shoving each other, and that's about it. And their fight scene only lasted for only a couple of seconds, but it was still more impressive than whatever Mark did. So then, you know, like, um, a lot of bad stuff, a lot more bad guys are coming, and oh, Mark, the mercenary, he can't whoop on people no more for some reason. Everybody's kicking his butt now. And so Layla is pinned down. But she takes on um, Harrow as too, but then she gets pinned down as well. Now this is the problem I have with this part. People are shooting at her, so she used her wings as like a shield. That's fine, but here's the problem. She, her, she, her wings only covered her head and her face. For some reason, these men have machine guns and they're only shooting at her face. Her entire midsection and legs are exposed. Why didn't they just shoot that? <laughs> because the writing is stupid. <laughs> and so then it happens. It freaking happens again. And this is the thing that pisses me off the most. As Moon Knight is about to get his butt whooped and everybody else about to get their butt whooped. And Contru is getting his butt whooped and everybody's getting their butt whooped. It cuts from that scene to the next scene. And oh, wouldn't you know it. Everybody's on the ground, bruised, battered, and bloody. They pulled that crap again from episode one. <sighs> Once again, one of the coolest fight scenes we could have seen has now been done off screen. Mark and Steve are switching back and forth like, hey, who did that? And they're like, well, it wasn't us. And then Layla's all like, Mark, what was that? He's like, I don't know, I blacked out. <laughs> and, stuff. and of course, we all know who it is, Jake Loxy. But we don't get to see him fight. So then, um, what is it? Um, They take like Harold, he just got his butt whooped too by Jake. And they all like, we have to rebind Ahmed. And so Layla's like, come on, I know how to do it. Who taught her how to do it? A couple of minutes ago, she didn't know how to do it. Was it the hippo lady? Cause we didn't see her hit nothing and talking about how to like seal up like Ahmed. So they go back into the cave. They do some magic spell and everything. And then it goes inside of that of Harrow. So then Conchu's all like, kill him and everything. If you kill um, Arthur um, Harrow, then you kill Ahmed as well. And then a great evil is like gone from the world. He's about to do it until I think like Layla or Steve's are like, don't do it, don't do it. So he's like, I'm not gonna do it no more. I'm not here for vengeance. And, nee, 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 and so then I'm just like, you idiot. A great evil threat that's not that threatening, by the way. Um, it's going to destroy the world and you ain't going to kill it. 
<laughs> like, what the world's wrong with you? And he's all like, I don't want to be your champion no more, and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. So, Kanju takes his powers back. Like, are you freaking kidding me? I just want Moon Knight. That's all I want. That's, that's, that's all I want. That's all I want. That's, that's literally just all I want. And now he ain't going to be Moon Knight no more? <sighs> F you, Disney. F you. And then, so, then the strangest thing happens. We get a scene. I don't know if, if, my, my, if my Disney Plus was messing up or what. But we get a scene where Halo's back being a psychiatrist. Mark is, or Steven or Mark, one of those two, is in the, uh, the asylum. And he's talking to him and he's walking around. Okay, at first I thought my TV was messing up, but it's not. I'm like, did it go back to like another episode? But then he's walking on the floor and there's blood coming from his feet. And then it goes from that to Steven in the bed. And Mark's all like, I can't believe you live like this. And then he gets up and he falls. Cause baby humor. It's a tie back to the first episode of Steven not knowing what the world's going on and has to tie himself to the bed because you know another personality comes out. I am confused. I am confused. I am confused. Did he did Contu turn bad time or something? Um because time travel is impossible, remember? Because if you turn back time and you alter it, then it doesn't change the future. It just creates an alternate reality. Remember um, Infinity War and stuff and Endgame and all the other crap? So then it ends. And I'm thinking to myself, that's it? Like, this, this, that's it? And then, so, then you have to wait for the end credit scene. Cause well, before this episode, I watched it. I was on YouTube and somebody's all like, end credit scene is playing. I'm just like, wow, that dude sure does look like a taxi cab driver. So, I went all the way to the end credit scene. And it's somebody getting Halo out of the asylum. Now he's locked up. And we see a limousine. This is the same limousine from the comic book where Stephen Grant drives. And so, we see Conchu. Human size, wearing a suit, kind of like it is from the comic. And so he's talking to Halo and he's all like, you know, Mark doesn't want to do it, but I got somebody else that will and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And he taps on the window like, meet my friend Jake. And it's, of course, Mark as Jake Loxley. He takes out a gun and he shoots the brains or he blows the brains out of like Arthur. So now he is dead. So... Then it ends. You know, I get uh, the MCU's always been an adaption of that, the comics, right? I get that. They do their own thing. But normally when they do their own thing, it's still good. I don't know what the world I just watched. And I don't know why I just watched it. And, and it's just kind of like, that's it. This is the spectacular Moon Knight you gave us. It's not bloody. It's not gruesome. The fight scenes were all done off screen. Whenever there was a fight screen early on in the series, it was totally lame. Then you give us a pretty okay fight scene here, but then Moon Knight still gets outshined by everybody else. And it's kind of like, so you mean to tell me I spent four episodes of some man who walks on glass who just wants to resurrect this evil Egyptian god and the other Egyptian gods aren't doing anything to stop it. <laughs> and then they have to find a scarab beetle because that's like a compass. And then when he finally finds the, 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 the statue thing and resurrects his giant alligator lady, it's just, it's all for like nothing really. Like, do you just wanted to suck a bunch of souls out of people? And so then there's the whole love triangle y'all created between Steve himself, Mark and Layla. And then, but this is what I don't get. Layla wants to kill Mark. So she don't want to kill him no more. And what's, and what's going to happen to her? What's going to happen to her and her, 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 her avatar? Oh, and then the other avatars are a bunch of punks who died from a dude with a magical staff. And they got magical powers up their own. But the Egyptian gods act like a bunch of little weenies. F. U. Disney Marvel. This is one of the lamest superhero shows I have ever seen. And this is coming from Marvel and Marvel does a good job. 
that's what's scary about it. I don't care. I read a watch, Iron Fist. <laughs> Again, to watch this, and I hate Iron Fist. <laughs> but I read a watch that, then to watch this, and that's embarrassing to say. I I read I watched the first season of Agents of Shield because of that first season. I never watched again. Supposedly it got better. I don't care. I didn't watch it. I mean, heck, I like Marvel's The Runaways. That was actually a pretty good show. I like that a whole lot, heck, a lot better than this. And that show has its problems, but I like it a whole lot better than this. And so I'm tired of this formula of Disney. I'm tired of this lackluster crap. I'm tired of the baby humor. We have got to stop letting Marvel get away with it because they're going to keep doing this with other series. Look at WandaVision for crying out loud. It was a cool series. It was fun. I bet it was like a cool series. It was fun. But for a bunch of episodes, it was just a mystery. Then they gave us a bunch of action in the last episode. And it was kind of like, but you know, at least that set up for the MCU movie, the Doctor Strange thing. Because it's kind of like, okay, first they let us think that Wanda was the villain. But then it turns out, no, she's not the villain. But in reality, she is the villain because she still kidnapped all those townspeople and rewrote their memories and stuff by mistake. And from what I'm hearing from early, hey, this is like a spoiler for Doctor Strange too. This is what I'm hearing from other YouTubers and stuff. Doctor Strange, the second movie, is having mixed reviews. Some people says it's too much of a Sam Raimi movie. Now, if you love Sam Raimi older stuff, then you're gonna love this movie. But if you like the MCU stuff, then you ain't gonna like this movie, supposedly from what people are saying. And from what people are saying when it comes to WandaVision, it's like, it undoes like that of WandaVision. Like, she's just bad for the sake of being bad and everything. And a lot of those cameos don't really matter because they're just like, eh, and stuff like that. So don't give your expectations up too high if you watch Doctor Strange, apparently, from all these other YouTubers, because it, it, it's okay. And I've listened to two different YouTubers and stuff, and they're saying the same crap. And that's what's scary. <laughs> <laughs> when more than one person starts saying the, the same thing and more start jumping on that bandwagon, it's gonna be a dud probably because this was supposed to come out before Spider-Man Spider-Man No Way Home. But since Spider-Man No Way Home came out first, they had to rewrite a lot and reshoot a lot of Doctor Strange. And I bet you anything, it ain't gonna be that great. Also, they had to make Sam Dow, um, Dow down the, the, the horror aspect of it. I think it was too scary, I think, at first. They had to have that PG-13 rating. But they say it is very much a, a horror-type movie, but it's... Sam Raimi, so it might be on the level at times of probably not the Evil Dead 1, but probably Evil Dead 2 or Army of Darkness. Probably more so Army of Darkness. Because they said at one point the dialogue was so weird, people was laughing at the movie and not in a good way. So, what's the point? That's my thing, just what's the point? I think Marvel's trying to sabotage themselves. I really think they are. <laughs> Unintentionally, that is. <laughs> and stuff. Because what are they doing? Like, see, I just like, what are they doing? And everything. Alrighty. Well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.